Hi, I'm Lisanne Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and it's Third Thursday with Lisanne in February. First, a happy Valentine's Day to everyone, and I hope you hooked a little red or pink in for Valentine's Day. So, first, I want to thank Rug Hooking Magazine. This is the latest issue of Rug Hooking Magazine. Wonderful issue, great articles. Make sure that you get it and add it to your collection. That's always a good reference, and we appreciate working with them. So today, uh, just about everybody is done with their holidays. Their winter is set in or the cold is set in. You can't start your gardens right now if you're in the Northeast. So you're rug hooking. And I wanted to go over some basic information that we get questions on here at W. Cushing daily. So we're going to start. It is kind of a tools of the trade, but goes in a little bit more than that. So here we are. First, I want to go over uh, basics. This is strip sorters. These sort your colors. You can put the colors in. You can write what they are. They keep you organized so you don't have a rat's nest. They also work for mixed media and you can keep them in a basket like this or in a basket like that. Also if you have a larger frame you can lay them on your frame. Uh, this really helps and when you have to clean up in case you have curious cats they go away and they're handled really really well and they keep everything very nicely and if you work in values it's a must-have and it does work for textures we get that question all the time and it's for dyed wool or textures or mixed media yarns whatever you're using the next is scissors we get a lot of questions on the scissors uh, these are all offset scissors. Uh, these are a larger pair. Uh, these work so when you go to clip your ends or your loops, you lay it flat and you clip. The offset scissors are the best scissors to use for rug hooking. They're not heavy. They're not lightweight. They work really well and they're not that expensive, but if your husband uses them to cut plastic or paper, he will be in trouble and have to buy you a new set. These are the same thing, but much smaller. These are great for travel. These are great when you go to hook-ins. Uh, they stay on your frame if you have a magnet, and they work the same way. You just clip them and with the loops, and you just lay them flat. They're just a tad smaller. These, although the handles look the same, are duck bills. This is a duck bill. Uh, this is so if you are going to sculpt, if you are going to uh, clip to shear a rug. This is your protective shield. The duckbill is your protective shield so you don't overdo. So if you only want to buy one pair of scissors and you think you're going to sculpt in the future, the duckbills would be the better way to go. Again, these are the smaller duckbills, but they work very well and they're easy to travel with. So that is the difference in the scissors. Now let's talk backing. I want to talk about backings for a little bit. I can't tell you what backing you're going to like. I can tell you what to use based on your size cut. So we're going to start from the largest and go to the smallest. Again, we're going to start from the largest and go to the smallest. So here is our bleached linen. Bleached. Yes, it's white and it's bleached. And it is a larger hole. It will accommodate up to a hand torn and it will go down to a five. So think about a size five cut to a hand torn. The holes are bigger. It is stiffer. Uh, what is bleached linen used for? Yes, larger cuts. Also, if you have trouble with your vision, this way you can see the pattern a little more clearly. However, it is stiffer than linen because it has been processed one more time, so it is bleached. So sometimes until it loosens up, it will have trouble, you'll have trouble on your frame unless you have a Snapdragon frame, then it will stay tight. But this is a little bit stiffer. It's for wider cuts, but it also allows for the wider cuts so your rug does not buckle. So this is the bleached linen for the widest cuts, and you can see the holes right through there and they are wider holes. You can go down to a five. I would probably only go down to a six, but that's me. Okay, so that is our widest linen, and it's bleached, it's white. 
The next one is our unbleached linen. Our unbleached linen is a little bit tighter, as you can see. You can see this is a little tighter. This works from a three to an eight. I prefer it in a three to a six, but you can hook in an eight with it. This is not as stiff. It stays on your frame better. If you find it's a little stiff on your frame on your grippers, clean your grippers. And how you clean your gripper frames is you go to Dollar General, you get a barbecue brush, and you brush out all those little fibers. So in here, three to a six, the next size down, a little bit softer. Uh, you can get more detail. You can see the pattern, I think, very well. But if you're going to get the detail in here, you can put the detail in. Again, both can be used with mixed media. But to show you the difference, here are the holes here. And here are the holes in the bleached. They're quite a bit bigger. Quite a bit bigger. So this goes from a five to a hand torn this goes three to six yes you can do eight but if you're a packer um, be careful with it okay this is our unbleached linen these are the linens are the longest lasting backing and we do not print on burlap this is unbleached linen as well now here we go down to monk's cloth monk's cloth always has the line through it monk's cloth is notoriously stretchy okay it's it has a little give to it a little nap to it you've got to keep it at the same tension on your frame in the evenings i suggest that you take it off your frame and let it relax this is for smaller cuts yes you can go up to a six i hook on monks in a six without a problem but when I want something that I'm going to do a lot of detail with, and if I want to split the hole. So here are the holes on the monk's cloth, as you can see. But the fibers allow me to split if I want to go into the holes. So if I want to go into the holes, I will go into one hole, split a hole, go into another hole. Where normally you would get two in, you can get three in. So if you're looking for extra detail, if you're hooking with yarn, if you're punching with yarn, monk's cloth is your better option. You have to make sure that your grippers have good strength to them and keep, it, keep the tension even and let it relax in the evenings. I uh, would not go above a six on this. You can go down as far as you would like on your cuts with that. But as you can see, the holes are tight. The holes are woven. This is a cotton base. It looks great. It's a nice even weave, but don't go by the lines. It is woven. Still make sure, you know, the lines are a good judgment, but they're not exact. But make sure if you want to split and get more detail or hook with yarn or Oxford punch, monk's cloth is what you would like. Our tightest weave, and actually before that, I'm gonna take a pair of scissors so you can see this, because a hook will not show you. Here's a hole, I'm gonna open a hole. Here's another hole. Okay, you can see the two holes. I can actually go in between if I wanted and split those fibers. So that's what I'm talking about with the monk's cloth, and you can or you don't have to. So if you want your detail, you want a little more detail, then this is monk's cloth. Tightly woven, cotton-based, very soft. The other cotton-based, which is a little bit heavier, is rug warp. Rug warp is probably one of our tightest weaves along with monk's. It's a personal preference. This is again cotton. It's much heavier. It doesn't have the give that monk's cloth has. Monk's cloth has a little more give. Warp does not. The holes are, you cannot split the holes on warp. They are very close together. I would not go above a size five on warp. And you have to understand that this is a heavier backing. If you're not used to it, you're going to be punching in a little bit because it is heavier than Monk's. 
and then linen. It's great for Orientals. Love rug warp for Orientals because you can take it at the end and you can fringe the warp. It's, you can make fringe on your Oriental with the excess warp. It's wonderful, it's stiff, it lays down solid. This is rug warp. Again, I, don't, I would not go above a size five. So, repeat, from the lowest cut to a size five, rug warp. Lowest cut to a size six, monk's cloth. Linen, lowest cut to an eight is our unbleached linen. Unbleached linen, lowest cut to a size eight. And then our widest is our bleached linen. And I would start at a five, possibly a four, but I'd probably start at a five and you can go up to hand torn. So I hope that helps you when you go to pick a backing based on the detail of the pattern, the size of the cut that you're going to use and how, what look you want to achieve. Okay, now I wanna talk about dyed wool. This, these are questions we get every day so I thought we would go over this. This is a dyed piece of wool. This is what we call a pan dye. There is some variation in it, not a lot. It's a pot dye. It's solid, it may have some tones to it. It may not. If it had a lot of values throughout it, it would be a dip dye. But this is just a pot dye. The colors are basically the same. They go from light to dark, but there would be a greater graduation. This was done in a pot. I showed dip dye in a previous and I dip dyed yarn last month. So, but this is just a straight pot dye. This is a spot dye. This is a spot dye with only one color. It's a beautiful spot dye. When you want a spot dye, this is when you want something a little solid, soft but solid. This is where you want movement, you want motion, you want highs and lows, but you only want one color. This is a one color spot dye. This is a spot dye with multiple colors. This spot dye can be used for leaves, for trees, for animals in the trees. Um, this has multiple colors. It is spotted throughout. Uh, it's our woodland spot dye. The thing with the spot dyes, it may be unevenly spotted. When you get one piece, the, if you buy a second piece, the spots can never be exactly in the same place. They'll be close, but you have the same multitude of colors. Uh, this has multiple colors. It has colors that run into uh, each other to give you more color. Uh, this gives you a lot of options as you can see and how do you tell what it's going to look like hooked of course we're going to pleat it and yes we're going to pleat this up just like that put it around and that's how it will hook okay this is a spot die on sparkle i don't recommend going to a below a five on sparkle you can if you like it will fray a little bit but I prefer that you stick with a six and an eight on sparkle. The reason being there's nothing wrong with the sparkle, but it's a looser weave than our normal spot dye. The sparkle is awesome. If you wanna cut it in a four, know you're gonna get a little fraying, but I prefer you go up from a six up. This is another brighter spot dyed. It is multiple color spot dye, the bleed of the colors in between, work really well so you get a plethora of color out of one and then the oomph of sparkle. Again, if you're gonna go to a four cut on a spot, sparkle is not for you. This is a two-tone spot dye. There's only two colors in the spot dye. Uh, this is emerald. There's only two colors. There's not as much motion. It has more motion than the pot dye. It has nice color, deep, rich jewel tones, but it is a two-tone spot dye. This is a dip spot. It's called Nantucket. A dip spot allows you, 
a color wave. So you're going to start at one color, you're going to go into another, and end up at a third. So you have all hues and values of these colors. And dip spots come in multitude of colors, but what they're really good for is the colors in between. Because there's no break, you can hook it as if it was shaded and it takes away having to shade. A little less detail than shading, but it does the shading for you. And this is a dip spot, a dip spot. This is over dyed on texture. This is an over dye on texture. This is Vertigra. It's over dyed on a dark texture. It's got the rich hues, the texture shows through. That's what you want with an over dye on a texture. You want these lines to show through. So you have the bounce of a texture, but the, for lack of a better way, the modeling of the spot dye. So this is over dyed on a dark texture, and then the same colors, reach down here, are over dyed on a light color. The same colors were used. This is a dark base, this is a light base. And the, uh, actually it's a grayish base, it's a gray cream base. This is a gray cream stripe, this is a very much a darker base, both the same color, and look at the value difference. So when you're looking for things that are over dyed on texture, you have to know how much of the texture do you want, how intense do you want the color to be. This is a tourmaline dye. Tourmaline is a main gemstone that is faceted into many different colors. Um, tourmalines are a fun dye you can cut this across the color, or you can cut this down the color. If your wool is good wool, you can cut either way. The idea of only being able to cut one way came based on when we used to use clothing. So you can cut either way with this. And again, it is like a dip spot, but we've added the facet of the colors. So this is a tourmaline dye. And the tourmaline dye, you get quite a bit of color. Uh, this one is gentle waves. So you get the colors this way, down, and you get them across, as you can see. They're very gentle, they're very subtle, most of them, and they don't jump. Um, they jump in color from the, the beginning to the end, but they don't jump in between. It's a gradual process, as you can see. And this is a tourmaline. So that is the dyed wools. That is the dyed wools. The textures, I'm going to bring up the textures one at a time. This texture is Ocean City. This is an even plaid, an even plaid. People ask for light backgrounds. Do you want cream? Do you want gray? This is a cream background, but it does have the blue line in it. The blue line in it gives it motion. If you're hooking a light background, you want motion in it because as we hook light, you can see every loop and we don't want to see every loop. So Ocean City gives you the blue if you've got blue in the rug or you want a blue accent and this lighter color in here. So as you hook, you get motion. And this is a good cream colored to yellow colored background. And it is an even plaid. This is avocado. This is a stripe. Again, it's a good wool. You can cut it this way with the stripe. Makes a great awning makes great leaves, you can cut it across the stripe. When you cut across this stripe, you're going to get just hints of color. And when you first look at avocado, you think, well, there's not a lot of variation in the color. Take another look. There's blue, there's olive, there's sage. So when you put this around other colors, and I'm going to put it right around Nantucket, you can see other color. Look at the blue pop out you can see the other colors come out. This is not a predominant stripe, it is a tone-on-tone -tone stripe.
but it does have value. It does provide motion. This is blue tick stripe. Blue tick stripe is a stripe. It's much wider, as you can see. The color changes are a little bit more. Again, you can take pieces of this or you can just use it and cut it as is, especially if you're looking for a background that has a lot of motion and you've got red and yellow and green in your rug. There you go. It's got everything in it. So this is a wide stripe. You can use just the stripe or you can cut across the stripe and get the different colors. Hook it in puzzle pieces and it will make an awesome background. This is Rosie. Rosie is once again an even plaid. However, there are two tones to Rosie. There is a darker and a peachier tone. Uh, it's better to see it, I think, this way. Here's your dark stripe, here's your light. Here's your dark, here's your light, dark, light. Rosie makes great flesh. Flesh tone, separate fingers, separate legs, put features onto a face. Uh, if you don't want a lot of detail on your face, then that's this is the way to go. It also makes a nice background. Yes, you can blend it, as you know, with Ocean City, and they would blend for a nice background. But there are two distinct colors, and when, if you are using this for a background, you have to watch if you have a lot of browns because this will be, turn to taupe. But it is a good flesh tone. That's rosy. Prep School Plaid. Prep School Plaid is an even plaid. However, based on the size that you hook this, this will look like a texture or a dyed wool because of all the values in this weave in between. You have all these values in between. If you cut this in a four or a six, it's going to look more like a dyed wool. If you cut it in an eight and above, it's gonna look more like a texture. This makes wonderful backgrounds. It's a great accent. It can turn purple, it can be blue. But because of all the values in between in this weave of the textured wool, you get more of a dyed look with it. This pairs well with a lot of different wools um, and is really a universal wool. Mountain Trail. Mountain Trail does not have a lot of distinction in this texture. And that's wonderful for tree trunks. You can see the gold and the green. When you get your textures, look at them. There's a dark green, there's a golden green, there's a little bit of a golden brown. So this will really make a wonderful, wonderful tree, path, whatever you would like. This is a big plaid. The big plaid, this is big orange plaid. Big orange plaid is great for borders. Borders work really well. You can pick out what you like. You can just cut, pull, and hook. It is up to you. You will have lights, mediums, and some darks in here. This, is a, this will really fool you when you start to hook. It goes fabulous with browns. Look at that. Look how this brings out the gold and the brown, and this kind of takes down the orange a little bit. Works very well. Lovely piece. But if you don't want this, pull this out. Pull this out for another time. Or if you're doing a rooster, pull this out for the comb. A lot of things that can be done with that. Great for a border as well. This is a reversible texture. Reversible textures are always awesome. This has a plethora of colors. There's all sorts of colors in it. This is called 14K. And look at the two sides. A darker side, a lighter side. You get a lot of bang for your buck when you have the two. This is always a good goal to keep in your stash because it goes with greens. Here's emerald. It goes with reds. It will go with a lot of different colors, uh, even bolds. This gold will stand up to bold colors. 
here's Majestic Mountains, and you can see this gold still stands up to this bold. Great reversible. This is a herringbone stripe. Herringbone stripes, you have to understand, will have more light than you think because they are a herringbone. You can pick out what you want in this stripe or you can just cut across it. Uh, this will be a lighter stripe than what you think, but works really well. This is moss. Moss is a herringbone with a lot of color. It has all sorts of highlighted colors with what you put by it. What you put by it will bring out the colors in moss. These are always good to keep in your stash. It is a texture, it is a herringbone, but there's no light in this herringbone. And it's always a great one to keep because here's woodland and look how well they go together. The, the texture does not diminish the dyed and the dyed does not diminish the texture. So if you want something that has just, look for a modeled, modeled herringbone. Moss is a modeled herringbone. All these little colors in here, uh, great. It will change, it's prismatic. It will change by what you put around it. In other words, it changes one color here. If I put the orange, it goes into a different color. If I put avocado stripe next to it, again, it goes to a different color. Great one to keep in there. Last texture, fruitcake. I love fruitcake. I love fruitcake and wool. I love fruitcake and fruitcake. Fruitcake is a plaid and a stripe in one. It is even, but you can, when you hook this, this hooks much darker than it looks but you have different colors you could use if you were doing a turkey per se, fall leaves, if you wanted a background and you had all of these colors in your rug, you would just cut it. You can cut it unevenly. You can make sixes and eights or fours and sixes to let certain colors come in and out. Uh, this is a, ba a universal background that goes with oranges, blues, greens, blacks. So fruit cake. You can dissect, it is a stripe plaid because it has the stripes through it, or you can just hook it as is. And it does go well with just about every color. Beautiful, beautiful. So, I hope that this was interesting. I hope that you learned something or uh, answer, I answered some of your questions. These are just some things, they're basics I know, but they're important basics for you to make the right decisions so that you have the right tools for your next rug. So I'll see you in March, and I hope that you have a wonderful Valentine's Day, had a wonderful Valentine's Day, and that you have a great rest of February. Talk to you later. Bye for now.